Chickatan High School's Lady Warriors Field on Tuesday, May the 10th, 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday afternoon girls softball. And hello, everyone. Mike Houser along with Paul Rowe here as the Lady Warriors of Kickatan will be playing host to the Lady Crabbers of Hampton on a beautiful day for softball here today. Mike, we have been very lucky this season uh, doing the baseball and softball. We've had nothing but perfect days to do it, and today is, is, is just the same. It's a wonderful day. Bright, sunny, a little bit of a wind, but comfortable temperatures. It's a great day for a game, and we got two pretty good teams out here, Mike. Well, we got a team that's in a rebuilding mode. That's the Hampton Crabbers, 3-13, and 13, as they will be playing the Kickatan Warriors, 14-3 and three overall. The only team to, to have defeated the uh, first place Gloucester Dukes their only loss uh, a couple weeks ago by a score of uh, I think it was four to three four to uh, four to one okay. and one of the reasons is number 21 that you're looking at the back of on the mound for the Kickatan Warriors Allison Babinsack that's one of the reasons they beat Gloucester uh, she's a freshman and batter uh, leading off here for the Hampton Crabbers is uh, number seven the left fielder Serena Speller and she will lead it off for the Lady Crabbers here it's 0 and 2 is the count this young lady pitching today for the Bruins uh, is a, a freshman, and she is unbeatable. I'm sorry, the Warriors. Oh, pretty pitch as she looks at a call strike three. And for the Hampton Lady Crabbers today, leading off was uh, number seven, Serena Speller, the left fielder, followed by number six, Talasia Robinson, the pitcher, batting in the three holes, number 16, the catcher, Hannah Corrales, the cleanup batter, number one, Michelle Davis in right field. The fifth batter, number 14, Ashley Howerton, playing shortstop today. And the sixth spot will be number 13, Stephanie Warren, the center fielder, followed by number seven, excuse me, number three, Audrey Sautel, the second baseman, and number eight, Dominique Munn, the third baseman, and finally, number 10, Tierra Maddox, the first baseman. That's the Hampton Lady Grabbers lineup today facing the young pitcher for Kickatan that Mike was just talking about, the freshman, Allison Babinsack. And this is the, the Crabbers pitcher batting now with one out, uh, uh, Talasia Robinson. 0-2 is the count. There's a little ground ball to the second baseman. And the out is made two down here in the top of the first inning. And that's the one of the things I marvel at, Mike, every time we do a softball game when we have a ground ball or something. These bases are a lot closer here than they are in baseball. Here they're like 60 feet. feet. About 30 feet shorter than a baseball field. When a play happens, it happens quickly, ladies and gentlemen, so keep your eye on the screen. Two down here in the top of the first inning. Hannah Corrales, now the uh, batter for the Crabbers, number 16. She's their catcher as the uh, battery, the pitcher-catcher combo back-to-back -back here in the first inning. That was fouled back up here out of play. Hannah Corrales is one of uh, several students here on both sides of the, of, the, of the field that I was very lucky to have taught at Jones Magnet Middle School. Hannah's a, a great young player. She's hitting about 659, Mike. And just ripping it up here with about 28 RBIs. Uh, the amazing thing, though, is today is Hannah Corrales' birthday. So, Hannah, There's happy a base birthday. Hit. She strokes right up the middle for a shot up the middle. And that's the first Crabber base runner as uh, Corrales gets on with a base hit. That's going to bring up Michelle Davis. She is the Crabber's right fielder, number one. It was one down and runner at first base. As uh, that's funny, Cor Corrales so will just add to her great batting average here for the year. Oh, Pitches yeah. a little bit inside, ball one. She's she just has some amazing statistics, as you would think in, in softball. Uh, but 659, my gracious, that it, that's that's good. Ground ball to the first baseman is fair. She'll turn around and make the. Play at the bag for the third out of the inning here in the top of the first inning for the Lady Crabbers. No runs, one hit, one left, and there were no errors by the Lady Warriors as they will come up to bat here in the bottom of the first inning. We'll show you the batting lineup here shortly. Another fast half an inning, and that's something else, ladies and gentlemen. These pitchers work quick in softball. And the batters are not up there to take a whole lot of pitches. They're trying to slap that ball, get it into play, and, and get some people to make some errors so they'll get on base. So stay with us here. This, this one's going to move right along, I can tell you that. 
How nice that field looks on our screen right there. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's a shot from the uh, actually the uh, the right field corner is where we have our camera set up on the first base side today. We do. Yep, third base camera is on top of the the kick it in dugout, and that is the shot you see right there is an uh, excellent view of the uh, pitcher's mound. Who's up, who's up on third base? Is that uh, Gene? Yep, Gene. That's Gene. It must be Steve out in center field. Yep. And I like the shot from center field today. This is a good shot right here. That's a nice Look at that. little ground ball. We show a couple of replays from the top of the first inning. Showing off our camera crew and how well they well you know this this is actually an outstanding location for our camera out in center field because we get a good view of the pitcher catcher in the strike zone in, you know in what baseball else we get a good we've view seen of? well well, well us. we get a good view of the cameraman uh, yeah we get a good view of the cameraman hey steve you can wave there you go and i guess that's uh, i haven't seen who's down left field or uh, right field now i would assume that that is susan susie b Susan Bowers. As we get ready to start the top uh, or the bottom of the first Susan inning for Lady, Lady and Lady Warriors, Allison uh, Babinsack, the pitcher. She pitches and is also the leadoff batter here. Uh, freshman. A freshman. That tells uh, that you something right there. That means for you folks out there that know what a freshman is, ninth grader. She's in her first year of high school ball. Way back when, when they didn't have schools, we didn't worry about what grade you were in. But back, Mike, when you were in school, ninth grade was, uh, that was junior, junior high. high school. That's right. And back when we were in school, there was not a middle school program in the city of Hampton. It was first two, six would have been the elementary grades. And then uh, the junior high schools were the 7th, 8th, and ninth. And then you went to the, the high school grades, 11, 10, 11, and 12. 12. But like my students in my class like to say, Mr. Rowe, back when you were in school, there were no schools. Fly ball to center field. This might be a little bit tricky here, and that ball is actually oh, out goodness. of the park. And that ball went right over Steve's head out there in center field. <laughs> so oh, Allison Babinsack opens it up here in the bottom of the first inning with a solo home run right over the center field wall. Well, I, I, I wasn't really paying all that much attention to the swing. I thought it was a it routine look, fly ball. It, yeah, well, it didn't look like it was a ball that was hit very hard. But uh, Allison Babinsack, we're going to watch it on a replay. Let's see this swing see here. If we, let's see if he got a hold of this. Did he get Did That's, he get? Nah, he couldn't have got it. No, the ball, look at it. There's the center fielder running towards the camera, and the ball's already out the fence. But if you notice the swing, it was a high swing, and it was a hitch swing. And it, uh, it just didn't look like it was going to have enough on it. But uh, Allison, obviously, with surprising power, just that's that's right out in center field. Yeah, boy, straight away. Yeah. Pretty much close right over the, uh, I guess it went right over top of the uh, flags there, didn't it? I or think just it to dropped, the left of it. Dropped right there next to him almost. Sarah Beasley, the shortstop, will come up next for and Kikatina. I, and I'm almost going to say in all the years we've been doing this and I've been calling games throughout the peninsula all over the place, I think that's the first time I've ever seen one hit over the fence in a softball game for girls. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen one hit out. You have now. I have now. 2-0 is the count now to Beasley. Also in the dirt, 3-0 and is the count. Malaysia Robinson, the pitcher for the Hampton High School Lady Crabbers, right there in the middle of your screen. Well, that's pretty a good pitch. pitch right down pretty, the middle. Pretty pitch. That one's high. That'll put uh, Beasley to first base with a walk, and that's going to bring up Heather. Is it Linkos? Linkus. Linkus. Heather first Linkus. baseman, number 10. Yeah. With a runner at first, nobody out. Still one nothing. Kick 10. Bottom of the first inning as the uh, Lady Warriors are getting started here. There goes Linkus down to second base easily Ooh. with a stolen base. Took out the umpire on, the, on that one. 
And Sarah Beasley had that one stolen from the get-go. It looked like she just was way ahead of that throw. That'll put somebody in scoring position for the Kickatan Warriors. And the batter, Heather, Heather Link, is hitting a, a, a nice 352. You're hitting 352. That means you're putting the ball in play quite a bit. So look for something to happen here. Which uh, is just outside, and she steals on the catcher's throw back to the pitcher. Like that was just a an instance where the the battery, the pitcher catcher, weren't really paying attention to what was going on, and Sarah Beasley just took that base on her own. Pitches up high. Three balls, one strike is to count. Warriors now with a run, another run, just 60 feet away. Talasia Robinson trying to keep that run from coming in. There's a line shot to the shortstop. Comes home with it, not in time. And coming across the bag to score was Sarah Beasley. I tell you what, I'm no, I, I think that uh, Heather's going to I think we'd almost have to give her a base hit, but I mean, it, it has to go as a as a um, a fielder's choice and a sacrifice. With a what do you think? A sacrifice uh, RBI? Well, she gets the RBI. She gets but, the RBI. It's, uh, whether it's a fielder's choice or, or whatever, I you know, if it was give baseball, it would have been a fielder's choice. We'll leave it as a fielder's choice then, because that's what the fielder did. She chose to come home. <laughs> choice to come a home. little bit late though. <laughs> Ashley Nichols now the batter. The Third baseman for the Lady Warriors, number six. It's now two to nothing. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. Ashley Nichols, a senior. Oh, that, that line one. ball almost hit the young lady right in the leg. She was right on that pitch, Mike, as she just ripped that one right back where it came from. So Nichols gets a single. She's at first over at second now is Heather Linkus. That's going to bring up. Charmaine Holmes. Watch this fielder. swing. Nice swing. Right down low, flat head of the bat right on the ball. Just drives it right back up the middle. That's what you like to see. Pitch is in there for a strike. Now, Mike, here's a number five batter. Are you ready for this? 621. 621 for Charmaine Holmes. She's one of the captains on this team. Took a change up. Looked pretty good from this end. Must have been a little high and outside. One and one is the count. Dirt. Play by the catcher there for the Crabbers. One, let's see, two balls and one strike now. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. Pitches up over top of the uh, batter's head. Three and one. Change, nice change. Just did miss on that. Holmes will get a base on balls. That moves Nichols over to second and going to third now. If the walk is Heather Lincoln, that needs the bases loaded with uh, nobody out. Jasmine Pulley, the catcher for the Warriors, now batting. There's a ground ball up the middle. Oh, and it got by the shortstop. Two runs will come in to score. Jasmine Pulley gets that one on the ground, bounces it right past the shortstop, picks up two RBIs. So that ball will go into center field. Number 19, Elizabeth. Going to give her a, a single on it. Now that's going to put runners at second and third now, and uh, this will bring up Alicia Vett, second baseman. You going to give her a base hit on that? I am. Alyssa Vett. Alyssa Vett. Alyssa, Alyssa Vett. Because I couldn't see. Yeah. I had the catcher and umpire and it looked, everybody it looked like it went right over top of the glove from here. We'd have to see a replay of that. Maybe possibly get a replay on it just to see how close it was. Three and no now is the count. The batter is Alicia. 
Alyssa. 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 A, ju- a junior batting 395, doing real well with runners in scoring position. In the dirt, she will get a base on ball. That loads the bases back up now as Brittany York, the right fielder, will come up. Still nobody out here in the first inning so far. Four across the plate for the Lady Warriors here in the bottom of the first inning. Nice little change up. Looked pretty good from here, and he, she got the call. Lasia having a little bit of a control issue here, getting them up a little bit or down. When she throws that change up, she seems to have a little bit better control. Down in dirt, one and one. Unfortunately, you can't throw the change up on every pitch. The reason they call it a change up is because you're changing what you're doing. As you see it right there. Fouled off and uh, one ball, two strikes is the count. This is the first batter she's been a hit of, too, in this inning. Brittany York, uh, again, this, this lineup is just, you, you have trouble all the way. She's hitting 480, and she's batting in the eighth spot. So 1-9, 1-10, you've, you've got batters that are going to hit when they get up there for this kick of 10. It'd be interesting to know what their team batting average is. Gracious. I'd say it'd be up there. It's just high. Full count as it's now 3-2. and two. There's a pitch that's hit right up the middle. Base hit. And two will score again. So York will single. Moving over to second is uh, is a vet. Batting number 23. Scoring is Holmes and Pulley. And that will bring up Michelle Curry, the center fielder, and the number nine hitter. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. Number nine hitter, but batting 378 with 18 runs this year. I don't think anybody in their starting lineup is batting under three, 330. I don't think anybody's batting under 350, 360. That's why I say it's tough, top to bottom. Oh, oh nice play. Oh, almost got her. Because of the throw to first base, moving over to third is uh, his vet. Again, Curry is the batter to center fielder. Pitches in the dirt. Three and is the count. It just fouled back to the right here out of play. You're all correct on that one. That's what allowed her to move over. Alicia Robinson, the Hampton pitcher, you're watching right there in the middle Ground of the ball screen. ball to the second baseman. Toss over to first base for the first out, but coming in to score is Vett for the seventh run of the inning. Next up the bat, next Moving over to second base is Brittany York. So that goes 4-3 in the book and an RBI. And we will go to the leadoff batter again, Allison Babinsack. We've got one out now. And Babinsack opened up the inning with a shot over the center field wall. She did. She got hold of that thing with a swing that just uh, drove it right dead center field almost over the fence. Just fouled back here out of play. Uh, not only does Allison Babinsack do it on the mound, she can do it right here at the plate, too. She does a great job on both sides, She's offense tall. and defense. She's a tall young lady. She is. She was tall in sixth grade. She was very tall. Very good student. Very nice young lady. And was very talented in sixth grade as a pitcher. We used to talk. She loved pitching. Loved playing softball back then. Moving over to third base is Brittany York. Two and one is to count. I stopped by Hannah Corrales back there. Keep that ball in front of her. 
Again, happy birthday to Hannah Corrales today, May the 10th, 2011, is her birthday. Oh, nice change. Yeah. Though. And Allison Babinsack way out in front on that one. She did. Like I said, that pitch seems to be the one pitch that she's able to handle today. Three and two is the count. Full, full count, one down. Ground ball to the third baseman who cannot handle it. And then that'll go as an E. Five. And she should get an RBI on that because I don't think they'd have had to play at the plate. What do you think? Uh... That's up to you. I never give RBIs on, on yeah. errors. That's fine. Sarah Beasley now will come up to bat in the first inning. Uh, she walked, had two stolen bases, and scored. Babin sack on the air by the third baseman now down at first. Beasley, another of the captains here for the Kickatan Warriors. I believe there are two captains on the team. Sarah's one of them. She's a senior. Sporting a 450 batting average, 32 runs scored, 39 stolen bases, Mike. Squares around to bunt and fouls it back. One and one is the count. As an on base percentage of 647, she is a typical leadoff batter. High average, high on base, scoring a lot of runs, stealing a lot of bases. Usually you would put the, the, the person who, who uh, gets on base a lot in the leadoff spot, they actually have her batting second. And the uh, pitcher, a uh, freshman, Babinsack, is the leadoff batter. And what does she do when she let off the game? Home run. Puts it over the center field fence. Mm -hmm. Ground ball foul down the third baseline. That'll even it up two and two. Two and two. What do we call that? The uh, ballet count. Two, two. Eight to nothing already here in the bottom of the first. There's another ground ball down third baseline. Sign him. What a job it coach <laughs> down there did. Coach Chrisman doing a good job. You're watching LSC, ladies and gentlemen, your local sports channel. Tuesday, May the 10th, 2011. Line shot to the third baseman who ends up throwing the ball into right field. It gets by the right fielder, and on her way in to score is Babinsack, and all the way over to third base is Beasley. Actually, two errors were charged on that play, both by the third baseman. Going to bring up Heather. Linkus, the first baseman, as the Crabbers will call timeout and have a, a little chat there at the mound. Come on, girls, we got to get these out, so let's go. That last hit going down to third base. You see the third baseman try to make the out at second base. The ball goes by the second baseman and in the right field. You can't see it here, but that ball gets past the right fielder, I think. And both runners just circle the bases, one scoring, the other stopping at third. Lucas uh, hit into a fielder's choice and had an RBI and also scored back in the first. Back in the first. We're still in the first. Still in the first. Heather Link is again batting 352. She's a junior carrying a 3.92 GPA. Line drive. That's a foul ball down the third baseline. Hard to believe we're still in the first inning. But we are. We are. And, folks, you're still watching us, and that's a good thing because we're right here. So far, the first ten batters in this game have scored. No, nine out of ten. There's a little pop fly, and the center fielder will make the catch. Coming in to score is Beasley. So Linkus will fly out to center field. That'll go F8. Actually, it's two we'll outs. SF8 because it's a sacrifice fly because they're running on third score. There you see the pop-up right towards center field. The center fielder camps under it, shades herself, gets the catch, makes sure of the out. 
and the run scores. And that center fielder for the Hampton High School Crabbers is the young Stephanie Warren, another one of the young ladies I had the opportunity to teach. Now 10 to nothing. Pop fly to the first baseman is foul and off the glove. So Ashley Nichols will come back and get another shot at it. She had a first base, a uh, single in the uh, her first, first trip <laughs> in the first <laughs> inning. In, oh gosh, it is still the first inning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, she had a first. She had a single back in the first inning, yes. back early in the first inning, right? Yes. Ooh. Little little line drive to the shortstop and the throw and the out, and that will finally end it for. The Kickatan Warriors, as they scored 10 runs on. Four hits. One. And one of them was a little questionable, you said, so. We'll give them uh, four hits. Four hits. Left on base was one. Earned runs. Uh, well, ha we've got to figure out how many earned runs there were here. That I'll let you been. take care of that. I'll let you take care of that. The wind's picking up a little bit here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching LSC, your local sports channel, coming to you from Kickatan High School, May the 10th, 2011. You're watching us on Channel 48. If you're watching Cox Cable, you're watching us on Channel 22. If you're watching us on Verizon Fios. I only counted Seth. Did I, did I mess that up? I'm looking for my sheet. What sheet are you looking for? A sheet that tells us all the information I need. There it is. I got that right. The truck told me, I guess, Cox Channel 48 and Verizon Files Channel 22. I was right. I didn't see any issue with it. I think the person that you that did, you can understand <laughs> why. <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to, we have a new picture already. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see this, uh, of course, we're broadcasting it here uh, Thursday, May the 12th, 3 p.m., as you're watching it on TV right now. Uh, we'll, we'll broadcast it on Friday, May the 13th at 8.30 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. And also on Saturday, May the 14th, uh, my sister's birthday uh, at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And here we go as we go to the top of the second inning. Now the Lady Crabbers will be trailing. 10 to nothing. That's going to bring up Ashley Howerton, the shortstop for the Lady Crabber. She squares around the butt, pops it up. And it goes foul. Ashley Nichols, the third baseman for Kikatan, in there real quick, but couldn't get that catch. The uh, new pitcher for Kikatan is number 10. You need to get the Kikatan lineup out. And their call, let's see, a swing and a miss. 0 oh, and 2 now is the call. It looks like uh, going over to first base is a uh, bad sack, sack, but I don't know who, who came out of the lineup. We'll have to keep an eye on the batting. And oh. she gets a call strike three. It's Heather Linkus now pitching number 10. Next up for Hampton, number 13. Uh, Heather was the first baseman, so it's a straight swap. As Babinsack will go to first, and Linkus will come uh, over is. to pitch. Number 13, Stephanie Warren for the Hampton Crabbers at the plate. F. Stephanie, the center fielder that made the catch in the first inning for the second out. And this is her first trip to the plate today as we are in the top of the second inning. And the Kikatan coaching staff said they were going to pitch three, three young girls today. There's a ground ball to shortstop and a toss over to Babinsack for the out. And that will be out number two. Makes a a smooth, smooth, smooth play by Sarah Beasley at shortstop for the Kicktown Warriors. She made that look real easy. Audrey Sautel is the batter now. She is the Crabbers' second baseman, number three. Two down here in the top.
top of the second. Pitch is a little low. Audrey Sautel sporting eight. You ready for this 3.8 GPA? 3.8. If I had a GPA that heavy when I, was high, when I was in high school, I would never be able to carry it around. And she has no Foul problem straight with back. <laughs> oh, that one was a rough one. Oh. That was that was a goodie. One and one is the count. Pitch is low. Two and one. All strike two. Two and two is the count. Two down. You see Linkus in the middle of your screen as she lines up on the pitcher's mound. Shifts the ball around until she gets the grip she wants. And then, boom, there it goes. Ground ball to second baseman. Scoops it up. Shoots it over to first for the third out in the inning. 4-3, and that's the third out. Real quick, Crabbers and the Crabbers in the top of the second inning. No hits, no runs. There were no errors and nobody, nobody left on. There you see the last out right there on your screen. Thanks and folks, me. we haven't given you this lineup yet. But we're going to right now. Leading off for the Kickatan Warriors, number 21 Allison Babinsack, who's now at first base. Number 20 Sarah Beasley, the shortstop. Number 10 Heather Linkus, who's now the pitcher. Cleanup batter, number six, Ashley Nichols at third base, followed by number seven, Charmaine Holmes, the left fielder. Number 14, Jasmine Pulley, the catcher. Number 19, Alyssa Vett at second base. The eighth batter, number 13, Brittany York in right field. And batting in the nine hole, number 23, Michelle Curry, the center fielder. That's your Kikatan Lady Warriors lineup. As we get ready to start the bottom of the second inning, Lady Warriors out in front 10 to nothing. That is going to bring up Charmaine Holmes, the left fielder, number seven. She had a single and scored back in the first, way back in the first. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that flag out there just a few minutes ago. That flag was standing straight out as brisk as it could be. That wind was blowing right towards Steve. And now that flag is just drooped. Look at it. A few minutes ago, if you're looking at your screen right now, you could have seen that flag stiff as a board running mm -hmm. out there. Just it's starting to pick up again. Now watch it. I tell you what, you get that ball up in the air when that wind starts blowing, and maybe that's how uh, Allison got it out there. She had the power, and she put it up there and let the wind take it out. Charmaine Holmes will lead it off here for the Lady Warriors. Ball one. Wears around to bunt the ball, misses it. That'll even it up. Hey, what, Charmaine, the senior on the team, one of the co-captains, uh, 621 batting average here, Mike. We talked about her last time she was up. She's got an on-base percentage of 714. She's got 23 RBIs. Uh, you know, I don't know how they do this, but uh, in softball, that, that girl ought to be uh, one of the potentials <laughs> for an all-district selection here. I'll tell you that right now. Look at the ball right down the first baseline. Gets by the right fielder, and she's on her horses now. She rounds second, hits for third base. She may come all the way in to score, and she does. <laughs> that lady put the ball on the ground, dropped the bat, and the next thing you know, she took the afterburners and put them on, and she was <laughs> Gone. Well, we're going to give her credit for a base hit, but uh, that's a three-base error as it went by the right fielder, and she will come all the way in to score. Makes it 11 to nothing now. That's going to bring up Jasmine Pulley, number 14. In the first inning, she also singled and scored. As everybody... In the starting lineup, scored except for Michelle Curry, who's only batted once. 
Yeah, the yeah, game's not over. Jasmine Pulley, 2010 All-District Catcher second team for the Warriors. She just nails one. That one goes all the way up to the right field fence and on her way to third base. And we'll make it there safely with a triple. Jasmine Pulley got all of that one, Mike. So, I mean, that ball just shot out there well over the right fielder's head. And Jasmine, who you're looking at right there, just takes it all the way to third base for a triple. Stand up, easy one. That now the batter as she reached with a base on ball. Ground ball towards the uh, shortstop in the hole. Nice play by the shortstop, but not in time to make the out. And that will go as an infield hit for Vet. That was a great play by Ashley Howerton, Mike. I thought that ball was in the left field, and she came out of nowhere to spear that one. The pulley will score, and that's going to bring up our yeah. That'll bring up Brittany York, who uh, let's see what does she do in the first at, her, her first at bat because I didn't break it down. She single, single. At two RBIs, two RBI. I'm sorry, Andy. Chastised me last time. It is runs batted in. The uh, runs are plural, so it should be R's BI. Uh, <laughs> yep, that Andy makes, corrected that, me. That then gives them five <laughs> hits in the first inning now. Because I didn't put her down for anything, so thank you very much. He watches ESPN too often, I guess. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Pitches in the dirt, gets away, and Vet will advance to second base. <clears throat> A lot of stolen bases in this game so far, too. Well, Brittany York is the batter. Looking, looking at some of these strikes. stats here, you can see why. I mean, uh, Brittany York has 13 stolen bases. You go back to that, Alyssa Vet has 12. Uh, Jasmine Pulley has nine and just keeps going to 25 by Charmaine Holmes. And these ladies are running. They hit, they run. Full count now is the, is the count pitch here, pitch count. Ground ball to the – oh, that was a bad hop. Oh, man. That ball bounced three feet away from oh, the second baseman. Oh, my gracious. Coming all the way in to score on the play is Vet. But we're going to have to give her a base hit on the play, and the ball just bounced right away from the uh, second baseman. She didn't even have a chance. Audrey Sautel, the second baseman for the Hampton Crabbers, had set up to take that easy bounce. And Mike, and look at you watching on the replay. Watch this. Boom. It just hit something right there and skewed off to the right-hand side. And it was Mike and I just looking at it, couldn't believe it. Shell Curry, the batter center fielder, she uh, hit into a fielder's choice. And got an RBI out of the uh, her first at bat. Pitches up high, two and O's the count. Audrey, when you're thirteen to nothing now. Audrey Sautel, when you're watching this at home, <laughs> I just want you to look and see how that ball bounced. That was just a strange one. York comes in to score as uh, Curry has a base hit, and they're singling Hampton to death right now. That's going to bring in Allison Babinsack, the uh, first baseman. She started off on the mound and uh, gave up one hit. There's a oh, right up the middle. Good job right there by the Crabbers pitcher. Yeah, that one came right back to Talasia and just climbed right up her and landed in her glove really more than anything. She's going to take a walk around that mound and let those muscles stretch themselves back up because that ball hit her right in the gut. Hope she's going to be okay. Coach, Coach Lucas is going to go out there. Here's the play. That's a hard smack, and it just went like right it may up have hit her gut. Oh, it did like hit it her. It may hit her right above the knees. Yeah. Well, it climbed up her. It hit her and climbed right up her and smashed her in the gut, too. So. She's probably got two two places right now that are uh, that are a little sore. Advancing to second on the play, Michelle Curry. That's going to bring up Sarah Beasley, the shortstop. Beasley batted twice in the first inning. She had a base on ball, had two stolen bases, and scored. 
and she uh, reached by an error by the third baseman and then advanced all the way to third by another error and scored. Well, we've got a few moments here, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to uh, thank our crew today that's out here on this beautiful day to, to film this game. Uh, on the cameras, Susan Bowers along the first baseline, Gene Wheeler along the third baseline, and Steve Fryer out there where the home run balls are flying. Our graphics and animation and uh, English diction person today is Andy Foley. Uh, slow motion instant replay is Krista Campbell. The camera control operator is Renee Camden. Chief Engineer and Audio Man, Don Schraus, who's been running around here all day long. The Director Producer, Mr. Scotty Bowers. I'm Paul Rowe, along with my partner, Mike Hauser. It's going to take Andy a little while to figure out that English diction person. I don't know. <laughs> He's looking it up right now. Uh -huh. He's Googling it. What did he say? What did he say? Looks like we're going to have a change for the Crabbers. Like I'm, the center fielder for the Crabbers will be coming into pitch. Well, I'm telling you, Mike, when you, when you when you were looking at that, when you were looking at it from here, that ball just went right smack down into her, and that just climbed right up or hit her and climbed right up into her gut. It was not not an easy thing to take. Here on the screen, we're watching the inside the park one that uh, I think that was uh, Charmaine. Look at her run. That was Charmaine Holmes. Look how fast she is. You know, I'd still be somewhere around first base if that were me running. <laughs> she's, she's just, I mean, she's lightning fast. She's <laughs> lightning fast. And the new uh, pitcher for the Craver, Stephanie, Stephanie Warren. Warren. You have to figure out who the player is now. It's in center field as uh, Talasia Robinson comes out of the game. Here comes another replay, and this is the triple by Miss Pulley. She just shoots that one right over the right fielder's head. I mean, that ball is way out there. And she hustles all the way to third base, standing up, says, okay, here I am. Get Steve to get the uh, uniform number of the center fielder out there. Maybe he can get it with his camera. We can tell you who their new center fielder is out there. Number 12. Number 12. I think you've got the sheet over there, partner. And that'll be a Saint Nichols, number twelve. Up to bat, number twenty, Miss Sarah Beasley. A S A N A. Looks like A S A Asana Nichols. That'll be the new center fielder for the Crabbers. We'll go into Talasia Robinson's spot, and I certainly hope Talasia's okay. I know if that were me out there, as Andy would say, I'd be like Mike Greenberg. I'd be laying on the ground calling 911. One and one is the count now. This is Sarah Beasley batting the shortstop. there. Yes, it was. So Beasley is safe at first and going all the way to third on the play is Michelle Curry. Still with one out. Beasley at first, got runners at first and third. That's not a fun way to greet a center fielder who comes in to pitch. You put the ball on the ground in front of him, at least pop it up to give her a chance to catch the thing like a center fielder. Heather Linkus is now the batter. Going down to second, goes into center field. It was Beasley coming in to score as Curry, and all the way over to third is Beasley on the play. And Sarah Beasley, they said, has just stolen, or just set the school record for stolen bases. Uh, let's see if I can. Sarah Beasley had 39 coming into today's game, and that would be 40, 41, 42. And we'll uh, we'll see if we can get that checked out later. Later, later. 
But right now, we just heard the announcer say that Sarah Beasley set the school record for stolen bases for girls softball. Heather Linkus is now the pitcher for the Warriors is up the bat. Got it. And stealing home on the, the wild pitch is Sarah right. Beasley. Do you actually call that a stolen base, though, or a wild pitch? It's a wild pitch. <coughs> but I would have called it. Two ball, one strike, two one. Doing one is to count. Link us to batter. Three one, three to one. May the 10th, 2011, a beautiful day. Nice sunshine, soft breeze, softball, kids playing, song in your heart. It's a right in the back. I think this will go to first, and that's going to bring up Ashley Nichols. Nichols had a base hit and scored in the first, and she also hit into a 6-3 ground to end the first Ashley inning. Six, Ashley Nichols. Ashley Nichols, as I said earlier, she's a senior, 3.5 GPA, looking to go to Old Dominion University when she graduates. Pops up to short right field. That one will fall for a base hit. Moving over to second is Linkus. Next to the plate. That will bring up Charmaine Holmes, the left fielder. So Charmaine batting 621 coming in this game. She's one for one. What do you think her batting average is now? More than it was before. Now she is two for two. Two for two. Yep, she had she batted. She's already batted twice. She opened she up the, the first time. Uh, Charmaine Holmes, I got her down as a base hit. Hard to do when you walk. I'm pretty sure she won't. We'll check it out. Next up to the plate, number 14, Jasmine Got to give her a base hit for that. She wasn't going to get out even, no matter what she did. No, uh, I don't think so. So now over at second is Nichols, and at third base now is Linkus, and the bases are loaded. That's going to bring up Jasmine Pulley, who has two base hits today. A well, single and scored, and a triple all the way to the right field fence. Yeah, and on that last pitch that was up there, she was looking for that one to grab it and put it up in the in the zone too. Line drive to center field is going to get past the uh, center fielder. And, and that's going to that'll be at least a double. And that's going to clear the bases. Yeah, a one out double that clears the bases. Figure if somebody hits the ball in the outfield with Charmaine Holmes at first base. She's going to score. That young lady's got some speed. Three RBIs on the game, on the hit. Here we go. Jasmine Pulley at the plate. She just turns on that one and pulls it into the gap in left center field. And that ball rolls to more to center field there. That ball rolls well. And the runner, like we have including a, Charmaine Holmes, go right around. Number five is coming into bat now for kick it hand, so we'll have to tell it was supposed to be Alicia Vett. Let's see who's in there now. Who's number five? Let's see what number we got up here now. Five. Number five. That's going to be Haley Tidwell. Haley Tidwell. He pinches with one down and runner at second base. Nineteen to nothing, folks. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> Haley Tidwell. She's a 10th grader. She didn't start today. She's batting 408, 20 runs scored, 13 stolen bases. My question is, who did they lose three games to? I don't know. <laughs> 14 I to don't 3 know. on the season. My goodness. Ball gets away from the catcher and over to third is Pulley for the Warriors. 
Allie Tidwell as a 10th grader sporting a 3.67 GPA. She's in the marching band, the symphonic band. She's also in the Spanish Honor Society <clears throat> and a member of the Kiets, along with playing softball for the varsity team. She will get a base on balls to start her game. Now you got runners at the corners. That's going to bring up Brittany York. Unless it's a new batter, it looks we like it is. Batter. Sarah Wiggins, number 25. There's a line drive right up the middle. Gets by the center fielder. She's trying to stretch it into two, and she does, and that'll clear the bases. And over to third, she will go. As Sarah Wiggins will be recorded, uh, uh, given credit for an RBI single, two RBIs, by the way. Mix up the bat. And of course, I never got a chance to tell you, Mike, that uh, Sarah Wiggins is hitting. You ready for this? 516 <laughs> with 17 runs scored and 12 stolen bases. A junior with a 3.8 GPA. What great student athletes we have in the city of Hampton. I'll tell you that. Shell Curry is the batter, I believe. We'll have to double check because they've been making some changes. It's 23. Okay. Sir. Center fielder had an RBI back in the first inning and a base hit. This one she pops up. The second baseman makes the play. Out number two. Nice catch by the second baseman for the Cravers, Audrey Sattel. That's going to bring up Allison Babinsock. Already has one home run. She is one for three. Home run. She reached by Era and grounded out to the pitcher. Which is a called strike. Folks, we're in the second inning. I'm already in the fourth column of the scorebook. <laughs> it's 20 to nothing. And the ball gets by the catcher and make that 21 to nothing as Sarah Wiggins will come in and score. One and one is to count. See, the scoring on that just takes away the opportunity for uh, Babinsack to get an RBI out of it. Something tells me these young ladies really don't put a lot of emphasis on getting personal statistics. This, to me, looks like a team that just continues to win. Do what's needed. That one went right through the wickets that time. Baffensack will reach <clears throat> by an error again. Next on the plate, number 20, Sarah Beasley. <clears throat> Sarah Beasley will now come up. <clears throat> Let's see, Beasley has scored three times. Had a base on ball in the first, reached by an error, and had a base hit also here early in the second inning. We have two outs. We have two down. Where's the other? I missed one. Very first batter. Uh, I have Allison Babinsack. And Chael Curry popped out to the second baseman <clears throat> a little while ago. Missed one. Ah, I did. Easily scored three runs. We're only in the second inning, folks, so a whole lot of runs have scored here. That one's way up. Going over to third now is Babinsack. Stephanie Warren doing her best out there on the mound to get the Crabbers out of this inning and back in the dugout where they can get their turns at bat. See if they can put a little bit of a dent in this game here. Fly ball to right field. Over the head of the right fielder and on to third base she goes. She may come all the way around, Mike. She's trying and that's going to be a clean one. Yep. Beasley will get an inside the park home run on that one. 
Easily smacked that ball into right field. Once again, a right fielder having a little bit of trouble picking that up, and that ball sails over her head, rolls to the fence, and Beasley showing some speed, hustles around the bases all the way for an inside the park two-run home run. Heather Link is now the batter. Fly ball to left field. Looks like it's going to be foul, and it does drop foul. It would take a statistician forever to figure all this out. Linkus is the batter. She was hit by a pitch earlier in the inning. And yes, we have batted around and we are one batter away from batting around twice in this inning. That one looks like it might've been inside. Gets the call though. Look good from here. One ball, two strikes. Pitch. That one's fouled out of play down the third baseline. And I mean out of play because it's out of the ballpark. <laughs> like they're having a soccer match over there back behind the softball field. Well, I can't believe you got that right. A what, a soccer match? A soccer match. Most people would say a soccer game. A good friend of mine would say, oh, it's a football match. What football are you talking about? Match. A football. Let's see what uh, Heather can do here. Pitch is way up out of the way. Three and two now is the count. May the 10th, 2011, you're watching LSC as we bring you softball girls variety from Kikatan High School. Out off over to third base side, up against the fence. Count remains three balls and two strikes. We're in the bottom of the second inning. A beautiful field, you know, as we, we've been around all the, all the stadiums now, and all stadiums, all the, all the schools, and used to be the girls' softball was just the old gym field that everybody played on. Now the girls' fields at all the high schools are really nice. Really, really nice, and deservedly so. Yeah, Hampton used to play over at the uh, middle school. Now they have their own field right there back behind the It's a beautiful field. field. We were there for the opening of that field. Yep, that was an uh, outstanding facility they got there at Hampton. And ball hits foul again. And, and, and let's see. Phoebus has, uh, has their ball field over behind the school, too. And, right. uh, and, of course, Bethel, they had to relocate theirs because of the new middle school being built back there. But we just had to reposition it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they all look really, really nice. Good field. And the baseball fields are good. We, we've got some great fields, great schools here in the city of Hampton. They've done real well in, in helping the athletic departments to get these fields in good, playable shape for the kids. Another foul by Heather Linkus, and she's just battling up there. That's about is four or five in a row. She's just way ahead of the pitch. She's going to have to show a little bit of patience and just hold off a little bit, pull the trigger a little bit slower, slower here so she can put it up the middle. Either that or uh, maybe Miss Stephanie Warren needs to take just a little bit more off. Let her swing through it. Ball to the shortstop. Nice, nice play. Not in time to make the out, though, as Linkus will pick up a base hit. I'll tell you, Ashley Howerton has made several nice plays at shortstop today for the Hampton Grabbers, getting balls that should have gone through in the left field. Ashley Nichols now the batter with the uh, runner at first base as Linkus. It is 23 to nothing here in the bottom of the second inning. There are two down. A little low, ball one. Ashley Nichols was the 2010 All-District designated hitter first team last year, and this year she's well on her way to getting another All-District selection somewhere with a 476 batting average, 519 on base, 800 fielding percentage. She's got one home run this, seven, uh, this season. She's had seven in her career here. She is a senior. This is her last year. Okay. 
Three and is the count. So far today, she is two for three, scored twice. Popped up in the infield. Second baseman comes in, makes the play for the third out, and I don't have to extend the inning. <laughs> yeah, but you got to count up everything now. Folks, if you hear of some silence here for the next minute or two, it's because we're trying to do some adding here without a calculator. I could make the... Well, they scored 14 runs. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ten hits. I got twelve. Let me see here. Let's see. Fourteen runs. How many did you say? Twelve hits? I got one, two. Well, I lost track right here. This is none here, so one. She's hit by pitch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. An error. Eight, nine. Nine hits. Here's what I've got. Where did I go wrong here? Started off here with Charmaine. Yep. She, she had, had five one. straight hits. Yeah, one, one, two, two three, three, four, four five. five. Got the top of the lineup. Nothing. Nothing. Next girl is six. six. Hit by pitch. Right. Seven. seven and eight. Over. Eight. Nine. nine. Base on balls. Yep. Ten. No, I didn't get that one. Which one was that one? Uh, Sarah Wiggins. Single and RBI. And then you go to the top of the lineup. Yeah, nothing. 11. 11. A 12. Home and a home 12. Run. The single. Goodness gracious. So I was right. I was and right. And there was what? One I left on right. base? Let's see how many errors were in that one. One. Hold two. on a second. I got to get Andy in the truck to mark this down. Andy, I was right. Mark that down. Three errors. All right, so for kick a 10 in the bottom of the second inning, they scored 14 runs on 12 hits. There was one left on, and there was three Crabber errors. So after two, the score is kick a 10, 24, and the Hampton Crabbers, nothing. And something smells good behind me, and it's food. Yeah, they, oh, got yeah. a, they got it all cooking, sure and I'll tell you what, they got a pretty good crowd here to, to uh, sell some, too. Hey. So Stay as in. we get ready to start the top of the third inning for the Crabbers, number eight, the third baseman, Dominique Munn, will lead it off. Her Dominique first Munn. trip here. Pitches in there for a strike. Dominique Munn with a 3.5 GPA. I tell you what, these Hampton girls got the GPAs. I was in the dugout earlier before the game started, and I was telling them if I had to carry around all these GPAs, I'd be tired at the end of the day because they got some really heavy GPAs over there. Out back out of play. 0-2 is the count. And I tell you what, the uh, out there on the mound again still in this inning is uh, Heather Linkus. We are in the third inning. Is that right, partner? We are in the top of the third. Pitch is a little bit high and outside. One ball, two strikes. And the batter has got a number five on her shirt. And the way I look at it, it's supposed to be a number eight, Dominique Munn. Yeah, let me see if there's a... Well, you have the Hampton roster there. Number five is Tisha Middleton. Uh, Tish Middleton. So rather than being number eight, Dominique Munn, who we've been talking about, it's number five. You say it's Tish. Tish Middleton. All right, we've got that one in there now. There's a base hit. As Middleton will reach, that is the Crabber's second base hit of the game. Yeah, she looked good up there, too. Selective on her pitches. Got a couple of them fouled off and hung yep. right in there. Did a good job. Tierra Maddox, now the batter to first baseman, number 10. That last pitch right where she wanted it, where she could handle it. She was looking to the right side. She put it there. She's standing on first. A bunt down nice, the third nice. baseline. Good job. And gets the force Whoa. out. Wow. 
Did you see that play by Ashley Nichols over third base? I thought that was going to go in there for a hit. Watch this. Play. This is a nice bun. It looked like it was going to right by Nichols. She picks it up, heading toward. And and look at that sweep tag. It was a force out. She had a nice sweep tag anyway. Yes, uh, Serena Spiller will ground out to uh, to the third baseman for the second out in the inning. Next to bat, number six, Talasia Robinson. One over to second base on the play, though, is Tierra Maddox. Let's see who this is coming might, to bat. Might have a different this number is, six. So, um, uh, this is Talisha. Talisha Robinson will come back in the game here, and she will re-enter. That's good news, folks, because she took a shot earlier in the game, right back at her when she was on the pitcher's mound. Ball was hit so hard, it looked like it hit her in the leg and then went right to her stomach and, and nabbed her there, too, and doubled her over. And she, it was obvious she was in a little bit of pain as she walked around. Coach Lucas went out, talked with her, and they thought it best to go ahead and bring her out for a while. And evidently, Talasia's saying, hey, get me back in there, Coach. How's that one back here behind the... Home standing Kickatan Lady Warriors dugout. 0 and 1 is to count. Over the head of Gene Wheeler. Two probably down. Probably never knew what was going on, did you, Gene? Anyway. <laughs> A little delayed steal that time by Maddox is safe down at third base. Smart steal there by Tierra Maddox. Walking off the bag, waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> yeah, and then just said, okay, I'm leaving. Hampton coach is not too pleased at the fact she took a chance to. There's a ground ball, too, to shortstop. The throw, great throw over to get the out at first base. It's another good play by Sarah Beasley, who looks very smooth over there at shortstop. I, you know, I haven't seen too many shortstops as smooth as her this year. She's not one of the all-district ones. I don't know who is. She's good. So for the Crabbers in the top of the third inning, they had one hit. Did not score in the inning. There was one left on. So after two and a half, 24 to nothing is the score as the kick and ten Lady Warriors will be coming up to bat here in the bottom of the third. What was my guess earlier? Not enough. Oh, my gracious. As we get ready to go into the bottom of the third inning play, the leadoff batter should be Charmaine Holmes, the left fielder. We'll wait and see. It looks like it's a number seven, and that's who it is. We'll take a look and see who's going to be the new pitcher for the Crabbers. Looks like Talasia's going to go right back on yeah. the mound. Now, you talk about getting hurt and going right back where you were. Now, this is simply amazing. This is simply amazing. Well, Talasia comes back love in it. pitches. And moving over to first base is Stephanie Warren. This girl's got grit. And there's a new center fielder out there for the Crabbers, and I cannot see the number, so we'll have to see who that might be. It's like number 10. Double digit number is TR Maddox. Yeah. She will move from first base over to center field. Thanks out there to Steve. Thank you, sir. So the uh, player that had came in earlier to take uh, to Lasia's spot is back out of the lineup now, and that was uh, Sana Nichols. Sa uh, Sana, 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 Sana Nichols. Sana. We're not sure how to pronounce that. Apologize. Seven, Charmaine Holmes. Charmaine Holmes, the left fielder, will bat. She's been at the plate three times. She's had three hits. She scored three times. So she is three for three on the day. Just 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh-huh. you're looking at a young lady with heart right there on the mound for the Hampton Crabbers after getting nailed by that ball that was hit earlier in the game. They had to take her out of the game. She's back in there. I love it. Ground ball up the middle into center field for a base hit. Four for four now is Charmaine Holmes. I still have her for a base on ball, but it doesn't matter. Jazz, Jesse, uh, Jasmine Pulley now the batter is the catcher. She's the one that's been dangerous today. Look at all these RBIs. Five RBIs, a single, double, triple. The only thing she hadn't hit so far is a home run. She's not oh, going nice to do this at play. <laughs> Hannah Corrales, the birthday girl, makes a great stab of that foul pop-up. Charmaine the out. will advance the second after the ball is caught by the catcher and then ends up going all the way to third base where she stops there. And that's with one down now and a runner at third. That's going to bring up, this should be Haley Tidwell. I believe it is number five. Yep. And she came in a, a last inning and had a walk. In the dirt, 2-0 oh is the count. Boy, them hamburgers and hot dogs they are smell smelling good, good, don't they? Haley is just a sophomore, 10th grader with a 3.6 GPA. Batting 408. Three and 0 is the count. But that one's right Ooh. up the middle between the legs of the pitchers, and she didn't have a chance. Tidwell will get a base hit in an RBI. Next at the plate, number As two. Holmes will come in to score. Talk about having flashbacks. This pitch, yeah. look at this, right there, and, and that's almost the exact same thing that happened, except the ball took a bounce and, and, and hit Talasia in the leg and in the, in the gut. Ball. Foul ball down the third baseline. This is Sarah Wiggins. Uh, she came in and batted and had a single and a, and a two-run a two-run RBI single back in the second inning. And she came in and pitch hinted for Brittany York. York finished the day going two for two. With three RBIs. <laughs> Twenty-five to nothing. You see, Miss Warren over at first base. There's a line drive right to the third baseman. Can't handle it. That ball was hit too hard. She just barely had time to react on that one. I mean, she she was in front of it, and the ball was going to stop, but it just kind of bounced right off of her and into foul territory for a single. Or whatever you count as a... Yeah, I'll give her a base hit. I was waiting to see what you were going to say. It was uh, just too hard hit to really handle that pitch. That one's off the face mask with a catcher, and now all the runners will advance. Over at second now is Wiggins, and at third is Tidwell. This is Michelle Curry. Curry grounded out in the first inning, had an RBI, had a base hit and scored in the second, and popped out to the shortstop for the second out last inning. Michelle Curry, one of the captains. She's in the Kiets, the Spanish club, National Honor Society, and the Spanish Honor Society. Just a junior with a 4.01 GPA. 3-0 is the count. Hit to the third baseman. The throw is a little bit late and gets by the first baseman. So two runners will score. We'll give her credit for at least one RBI. The other one will score on the throwing error. And then it scores. Now, how did she do that? Michelle Curry just came across the plate. While we were writing this down. She 
did. She just came across the plate and scored. Next on the plate. Yes, she started running and never stopped. Huh? I'm guessing the same thing. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We were marking our store score sheets, and I looked up, and there was Michelle Curry making the turn at home plate. There was a base hit by Babinsack. Another hit for her as the ball gets to right field. Over to second base, and she's thrown out. Now, I think they're doing it on purpose now. Second out of the inning. Next to bat, number 20. She gets credit for the base hit, though. Yeah, she gets credit for the base hit. That was interesting. I mean, she just kind of strolled into strolled into second base. Next batter should be Sarah Beasley, number 20. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. Speed, speed, speed. Nice bunt, base hit. We have a pinch hitter in here. It's number 16 coming to the plate. That is Brianne Barnes. Brianne Barnes, number 16, will pinch hit for Heather plate, Linkus. 16, Brianne Barnes. This is the number eight batter in the lineup here. Number eight batter or the eighth batter to bat? Uh, what's the eighth batter to bat? Yeah. Yeah. So we're only in the third three inning. batter. You're watching LSC, your local sports channel, as we bring you this girls softball game from Kickatan High School on May the 10th, 2011. As you look at the young pitcher from Hampton High School, Talasia Robinson, as she faces the batter for the Kickatan Warriors, Breanne Barnes. It's a beautiful day here at Kickatan High School. Nice day for baseball, softball, basketball, football, any kind of sports that can be played outside. Swing and a miss, 0-2 is the count. Easily will go down to second base. You see her adjust her helmet as she stands on second. But there's the good story right there, number six. I know I keep talking about her, but after the way that ball hit her, I thought she was going to be out the rest of the game, Mike, and she's right back in there trying to get her team in the groove or back on track. Nice There's a pitch and a strikeout. And that should be a third out, isn't it? On the plate, number six. It is. I have three. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody stood there. Like they weren't sure what was going on. How many runs this time? Four. Four runs. Six hits. Five hits. Okay, I got six. One, two, K. Okay. Three, fly out. Yep. Four, five, six hits. And one left on. So for Kickatan in the bottom of the third inning, four runs, six hits, no uh, one Here's. error by the Crabbers, and one left on. There's the ground ball that was hit to third base that went over the first baseman's head. Runners came all the way around, and I think this is uh, number 22. Barnes. Well, 23, there's the one. That's what happened. That was Curry. She went all the way around to third base, and evidently the ball got uh, lodged down there in right field, and she was able to come around and score. So thank you for the truck showing us that to let us know what was going on there. We appreciate that. New pitcher for the Kickatan Warriors, the one that came in and pitched headed for Heather Linkus is now pitching. That's uh, Brian Barnes. 28 to nothing at the end of three as we get ready to go to the fourth. Rianne Barnes is a 10th grader, just a sophomore with a 3.8 GPA, batting 333. The leading off for the Crabbers here in the top of the fourth inning. Hannah Corrales, the catcher for the Crabbers. For Hampton, number 
birthday girl right there at the plate. Hannah Corrales. Hannah came into today's game batting 659. She's one for one, so that's gone up. She's just a sophomore. Just a sophomore. She's got two more years to go. And I know Coach Lucas is, is glad that she's going to be there for another couple of years because she's done a good job catching. 0-2 oh now the count as she swings and misses on that one. So far as this pitcher has put every one of them outside, that one's a little bit low. One ball, two strikes. Two and two now as that pitch was a little low in the dirt. Fly ball to oh, right nice. field. Deep right field. Off the fence. Krause will go into second base with a stand-up double. Uh and, and I was watching as the ball went out the left field, Coach Lucas was watching it, and as the ball hit about halfway up on the fence back there, you can see her just kind of go, ah, watch this hit. Hannah gets into this one as she gets all of it, and I'll tell you what, it looked for a moment like it would go out, and Coach Lucas saw it hit up there, and she just went, oh, I was like, today's your birthday. Wouldn't it have been neat if that ball had gone out for you? Nice hit by Hannah Corrales. Two for two with a double and a, and a single. So we know why she's hitting 659 or probably somewhere around 665 at this point. This should be uh, Michelle Davis, number one, the right fielder. Squares around a bunt, misses. That's actually number nine. So the Crabbers are pinch hitting again. Tiffany Sell is her name. Tiffany Sells. Sell. Mm -hmm. Tiffany Sell. Right, so Tiffany She's Sell. Outside. One well, I ball, gotta, two strikes. I got to tell you something about Tiffany Sell. If we can get a shot of her at the, at the plate here. Uh, this young lady has a 4.39 GPA. I'm going to repeat that. 4.39. She's a junior. She's taking all 5.0 classes and has a 4.39. That young lady is amazing. And Tiffany Sell will ground out to first base for the first out. I'm glad she got in there when I went in the dugout, talked to the girls earlier before the game started. I couldn't believe that anybody could have a GPA that high. Just a fabulous job. Should be Ashley Howerton as she grounds the ball back to the pitcher. And she legs it out for an E1. Over to third base is Corrales. Who let, who let off this inning? Was it Corrales? Krause let off the inning. I put her in the wrong spot here. I need to change that. I have a pinch hitter, and uh, she has her warm-up jacket on, so we can't tell who she is. Number 11 will be batting. Number 11, and that is who? <laughs> Melania Harris. Melania Harris. Number 11. Pitch is low. Throw down the third base is not in time. 
advancing down to second was uh, Ashley Howerton. So the Crabbers have scores in position at second and third. Scores? Runners in scoring position. Scores in position. <laughs> Let me get my scores in position here. We'll put one over here and one over here and one over here. And... That one's right down the middle for a strike. And then the catcher throws the ball away. And uh, runner at third base was not paying attention. One and one is the count. Don't want to waste out either. No, but I guarantee you the Crabbers want want a run here. Oh, and I there's a ground ball one. to the first baseman off the first baseman's arm, and coming in to score for the Crabbers' first run is Anna Corrales. So the birthday girl gets two hits, gets the first run of the game for the Crabbers. Moving over to third base on the play was Ashley Howerton, and at first now is Harris. The next batter should be Audrey Sautel. Here's that last play. The base hit goes right off of Allison Babinsack's arm. It looked like the ball just bounced up and hit her on the wrist area. And it went off towards second base. Go <laughs> down to third base, not in time. Going down to second was Harris. 2-0 oh is the count now to the batter. Right in there for a strike. Coach Lucas said, come on, babe. Hit that thing. That one's right down the middle. All right, nice. Two and two. Strike three. Second out of the inning, so stay tuned here. We'll be right back shortly for Next to that, four, some more action here. All strike, one and two. Middleton had a base hit back in the third inning, was stranded at, uh, at first. A swing and a miss for the third out. So for the Crabbers in the top of the fourth inning, they broke loose with two runs. It was uh, one hit, two kick tan errors, and one left. Crabbers are able to get on the board there in the fourth inning to play. As we are now get set for the bottom of the fourth inning, and the kick tan Warriors are out in front, 28-2. 28 to 2 as they play on a wonderful day to play ball. And you're watching LSC, Cox Channel 48, Verizon Files Channel 42. We're going to be showing these games, of course, Thursday, May 12th, where you're watching right now, 3 p.m. Friday, May 13th, 8.30 a.m. p.m. And Saturday, May the 14th, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. LSC bringing you sports all the time, 24 hours, 7 days a week. You can watch us on the Internet. You can watch us on Channel 48. You can watch us on Channel 22. You can watch us wherever you go. Whatever you're doing, we're bringing you games from as far back as 1985. Oh, and that's what we've been smelling, Mike, right there. Hamburgers and hot dogs. And they smell good. They smell really good. The guys in the truck have been trying to get me to run over there and get them some. I guarantee you they can stick around a few minutes after the game. There'll be plenty there, I'll tell you, because there's a crowd here yep. of folks. There's the two coaches for the Kickatown Warriors, Mark Christman on your left, along with Mike Mugler on your right. Christman's been the coach here for many, many years. Good combination that it has the Warriors in contention for a good district seeding. Like and right now, it's going to be regional play. Looks like right now they'll be seeded second. There's one more game left as each one of these two teams will play one regular season game on Friday, and that'll take care of the the end of the regular season. Number six. Ashley Nichols now the batter for the Kickatan Lady Warriors as we get started here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ashley has scored twice. She has 
two hits and four trips to the plate. So she's two for four. Don't forget, we got to pick uh, players of the games here, too. And before the next inning, there is a base hit as Nichols will be three for four or three for five. Nichols belongs to the future business leaders of America. She's also chairperson for events and fundraising in that organization, and she's a member of the National Honor Society. Next on the play for Kikitan, number seven. Charmaine Holmes, the left fielder for Kikitan, will come up. What did Ashley Nichols do? Base hit. Where is she? I'm going to guess she got out going to second base. Well, showing one out on the board. I don't try and figure them I out. I think they're I being just, instructed uh, to go to try to get out. Here's a ground ball to the left side off the first baseman's glove. Base hit. We'll keep an eye on it down there and see what happens. Jasmine Pulley. Still on the base. But with one down, it brings up Jasmine Pulley, the catcher. Charmaine Holmes, the run on first, is either four for four or five for five. We got to figure out whether she walked or not in the first inning. She scored four runs. She came in hitting over 600. I got her five for five. And the runner at first base was off the bag early, but uh, fortunately for her, the ball gets by the second baseman. That will be an E4. Next on the plate, number five. Tough. Utah. 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 Lily Tidwell now is the batter. She came in in the second inning. In the middle of the second inning, we'll put it. There's a swing and a miss. And I see what's happening. They're just calling the outs and letting the player come off the bag. What did I miss? The runner at second base was called out. And the reason? I did not see why. Now maybe she left the bag early. That's a possibility. That's what they were doing earlier. That's a possibility. And she didn't get called for it because the, bait, the, the batter actually hit the ball into center field. Yep, gonna we're going to have it here, too, too, so the batter runner at early. first. So that's what happened. All three runners are called off at the bag. Uh, leaving early. Yeah, and it, you know that was on purpose. So officially for the Warriors... Uh, they batted three players. Uh, two of them got base hits, but they are all three called for leaving the bag early to end the fourth inning of play. Had two hits. Nobody were left on. There were no runs. So at the end of four complete, the uh, Lady Warriors 28 to Hampton, Lady Crabbers 2. All right. All right. You need to give us a player of the game for kick How about the entire team? <laughs> That would be the easiest way to do it. I mean, it. You, uh, I well, you're looking at this right <laughs> now. The, who who was the the strongest of them? You got. Oh man. Babinsack uh, scored three runs. Beasley scored four. Um. Uh. At Charmaine Holmes. Charmaine with Holmes. Either with four, four hit. five hits, four runs. Uh, but I then gave you her. got Jasmine Pulley with three hits and five RBIs. Uh. Oh, gracious. And, uh, and then we split them up between the next four batters. So, um, I, Charmaine, Com uh, Charmaine Holmes, had, to me, had five hits. A Jasmine Pulley with a single, two RBIs, a triple, a double, three RBIs. She's three for five. Three runs scored, five RBIs. And you got Charmaine Holmes who is either four for four or five for five with four runs scored. And then you get the two girls with home runs. You got Allison Babinsack. She's two for five with a homer. And you got Sarah Beasley, who's three for four with four runs scored and a homer. 
So yeah. when you say the whole team is not, here, here, not, here's my pick, it's, it's, and it's, then I'll let you do what you want to. It's well, that's 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 tough. How do you go against this? That's uh, it, it's tough. It's tough. This one. Next to bat number ten, Tierra Maddox. Oh yeah, that's that's Tierra Maddox. Uh, will lead it off of Hampton here in the top of the fifth inning. So the Lady Warriors are three outs away from winning their 15th game of the year. Pitches in the dirt. As they will have one game left now this Friday. That will end the regular season of play and the Peninsula District Tournament will start sometime next week. Ground ball to the first baseman. And she will record the first out unassisted. That's going to bring up the leadoff batter, Serena Spiller. She is the Crabber's left fielder. She is 0 for 2 in the game. Can we have co-players? Sure. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Go for it. Well, obviously, we know this one uh, right here. Yeah, yeah. That one's a done deal. It's just the kick team's got so many, and I think two of them were really outstanding today, and they, they both need to be mentioned, I think, for what they've done. Well, we want to uh, uh, wish kick uh softball team all the, all the luck they can have as they advance to a district playoff contention next week. Right now they're in the number two seed, and I believe that's probably where they'll end up after this win. Spiller grounds out un unassisted also to the first baseman for the second out. That's going to bring up to, to Lasia Robinson. And she is 0 for 2 tonight. That's a good possibility. This could be the end of the game, Mike. So uh, your choice for the nice change up. Your choice for Hamptons. Well, I think it's pretty easy. Play of the game? Yeah, the Hannah Corrales, who uh, was about four feet shy of a home run last inning, <laughs> has the ball hit right in the middle of the left field fence. And uh, she is two for two, has two or uh, a double and a single and scored. Uh, scored to Craver's first run of the game. So Hannah Corrales will be the player of the game for the Hampton Cravers. I'm going to give co-players to kick a town because I just think both girls did a super job today. And that's uh, Charmaine Holmes, left fielder number seven, who uh, is either five for five or four for four. I'm sorry. I've got her for a walk in the first inning. Mike's got her for a hit. We can't remember what it was. Oh, well, that was way back. Uh, yeah, it was way, way, way back. That was two there. hours ago. But she scored four runs. She was either five for five or four for four. The other young lady is the catcher, Jasmine Pulley, who's done a good job behind the plate. But not only that, she was a home run shy of the cycle. She was three for five, three runs scored, and five RBIs. She had the singles, she had the doubles, she had the triple, but she missed the home run. So I'm going to give co-players to Jasmine Pulley and Charmaine Holmes, the speedster, who, who is batting a phenomenal, probably somewhere near 700 now for the Lady Warriors. Well, the final score here at Kickatan is the Lady Warriors 28 and the Lady Crabbers, too. So look for the schedule in the newspaper next week for the Peninsula District Tournament as they will be getting started. It looks like the Lady Warriors will be the number two seed right now as they are 15 and three on the season. Actually, they're 14 and three in, in league play, but they right. are 15 and three overall with one league game remaining Friday night. So. It, Final words from you there, Paul? Well, I just want to make sure everybody remembers to watch us on Cox Channel 48 and Verizon Fios Channel 22, Thursday, May the 12th, which is when you're watching right now. Friday, May the 13th, 8.30 a.m. and p.m. Saturday, May the 14th, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Well, we've had a great time here today at Kickatan High School's Lady Warrior Fields where baseball and softball and soccer and everything else should be played on a day like today. We saw a great softball game. Yep. Final score again here was the Lady Warriors of Kickatan 28 and the Lady Crabbers of Hampton 2. Well, for Paul Rowe, Mike Hauser, and the rest of the crew here, so long, everyone. You've been watching LSC, your local sports channel. <laughs>